can try and stop on keeping beans in. So this is from Limestone Brewery or Limestone Brewery and it's Stone Dead. It's an imperial style. Get in. 6.6% ABV, bit of a low ABV imperial to be fair. Um, here we go. You can count on this rich, dark imperial start having enough bite for anyone looking to satisfy their thirst. Coffee, burnt toast and bitter fruits dominate while Styrian golding so slowly seduce the palate. Looking forward to this. You know, I don't... Not many imperials below 8% these days, so... To be classed as an imperial stout is an interesting um an interesting thing i know muntons do an imperial stout beer kit and this is only four and a half percent do you wonder if you can really call it an imperial stout kit at that percentage i would have just called it a stout kit but hey ho what do i know so black poor tan head on this quite a dark tan head head Big um, head on this, quite solid head. Don't know if you can see. I'll tip it a little bit. Yeah, definitely roasty toasting is going off. Mm. There is coffee and chocolate smell on there. Right, let's dive in. I'm, I'm looking forward to this just to see what it's um, 6.6%. In some ways, it's probably a good thing because I'm painting and I've got to put a second coat on. Looks like it's going to set three coats. It's got new skirting boards and architrave in the dining room. And even though it's had some like prime paint on it, whatever it primed, it's um, crap. So it's going to be a second. It's going to, this first coat is going to be the key coat and then go over again and hopefully two coats, maybe three. But after the journey we've had, we need to be right. Um, been a journey. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely burnt, definitely a burnt toastiness to this. Let me just turn off my um. what is happening that's better yeah what's happening is people are messaging me um it's a nice stout i won't class it as an imperial no it's 6.6 percent they're brewers, so they know what they know. I mean, I've had lots of Imperial Stouts. Um, lots of very impressive Imperial Stouts, including some that I've made myself. And um, I'm just seeing, once the air gets to it, what, what, what happens and see it's how it, how it, how it changes and that. Uh, it tastes like a great Stout, don't get me wrong. But I'm not getting that Imperial vibe. I were on the strength side of things and, and certainly aroma and taste. I, I'm not getting the vibes, you know, that complexities. Albeit, it's a nice stout, don't get me wrong. I just want the air to come out. I just want to get some air to it and see, and see how it cooks, how, how the cookie crumbles, as, as it were. So, do hope everyone's having a great week. We are on Thursday already. Where do these weeks go? It's crazy. And uh, especially after last week, we had a three day week. <laughs> Putting a bloody bank holiday on Thursday and Friday. I mean, it was great. It was a great weekend, let's be fair. You know, quality weekend. Bit of a quiet week this weekend, uh, and but I, that's good for us because we need to get the house ship shape and uh, get the dining room put back to normal. Just get the house put back to normal. Give me me shed back, <laughs> yeah, because the 
the beer room at the moment has got lots of stuff in it. Ain't no way I'm playing games this year because I can't get to my games to play them. Um, hey ho. And I'll be brewing again soon. I've um, got a couple of brews on the go soon, so um, for later in the year. Yeah, I'm looking at brewing some, uh, maybe a stout and maybe a porter. Uh, and maybe even a lager. But then I also want to do um, white wine and a rosé wine. So busy, busy brewings. Busy brewings, eh? That could be a, could be a name. Busy brewings. Yes, you braggy. Yeah. Crazy busy week at work. Do you know, I sometimes forget what I've done in a week simply because of, this, of the absolute workload that I put myself through. And um, the mountain of planting I've done this week, I've planted literally shed loads of stuff. And mowed and edged off. And I get through so much work. Balmy. And... Uh, you know, but the quality of my work at, site, at both my sites is outstanding. It, it is. You know, it's uh, it's good to see that people come and uh, uh, they're looking like, oh, this is nice. I actually had that compliment this morning. And I do apologise for anybody who's watched the copy of video. Um, the pixelation on it, Jesus Christ, it was pixelated. Um. I need to do it again tomorrow. Wipe my phone. I know there's a wedding there tomorrow, so I need to be a bit quieter. Uh, we've got a wedding there today. Uh, I met them this morning. And, and the night, the, you know, it's nice when you get thanks for your work. It says, your God, these gardens are amazing. I says, should have been there two years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're on the journey. The journey's not ended yet. The journey, it's a multi-year journey. But by next year, it should be good. And, uh, yeah. Especially come July, because July the 11th is when we're having our wedding vows. And it'll be interesting this year to see what colour what colours are out by July. Um, July's not far away. Um, so I'm hoping that by July this year, I'll see what's out and see what I have to try and do and try and try and bring some other stuff into play to make more colour. Um, so, back to the beer. I needed just to let this, we'll give it a couple more, minute, more minutes actually. With an imperial stout, um, this is already at room temperature anyway, 6.6%. Got to be honest, it's a bit low. Uh, been 8%, 8.5%, I would have said, yeah, that we're in, we're in the beginning of imperial stout territory. 6.6%, you don't see, it's only really old-fashioned breweries that do do that ABV if I'm being honest your craft beer breweries gen generally start off at 8% and above and pff, anything up to about 17% which is crazy crazy to, um, uh, ABV I am going to do for the channel um, a big boy ABV Imperial homebrew um I'm going to get this, the yeast that comes with it, but I'm also going to get some turbo yeast that can that can brew up to 23%. Um, as an experiment, and see if I can make a 23% imperial stout. Wow. Yeah. Luckily, I don't have to sell it. And I can understand why breweries bring out stouts, imperials, at a lower ABV. Why? Duty. Duty is a killer uh, for, for most breweries. So 
um, I can understand why. Um, so, I do like Limestone Brewery ever since I went there in 2016. Wow, some time ago that was. Uh, went with my father-in-law, who we don't really speak to these days because he's gone, he's got old and funny. Yeah. Uh, and it, there's this thing in life. Now, if I'm talking to people watching this video, um, and if you are of an age where you are a grandpa or elderly, or certainly getting, you know, growing up in life, what I would say is treat people how you yourself would want to be treated. You know, this is the thing. Um, be right with people, they'll be right with you. If someone's an idiot to you, then, you know, then obviously reciprocation is always a thing. Um, in my life now, I know. There's some people I like because they're genuine and they listen to you. And then there's other people that you know that they only really listen. They half listen to you. They're not really interested. They only really care for themselves. And you think to yourself, what, why? Why do I even bother? And sadly, there's a lot of that about. Um, we've, all, we've all got a story in life all of us we've all, we're all on a journey whatever that journey may be I'm on a journey to get a bloody haircut because it looks awful yeah yeah. I might start calling myself Reese. yeah Reese Eden but um, yeah and uh, yeah grey yeah man grey grey but yeah um Without being funny, I need a bloody haircut. But, um, yeah, we're all on a journey. And, you know, I find the best place is to treat people decent. And, and you know, if they're dickheads, if they're, you know, idiots, dickheads, whatever, you know, then that's their, that's their fault, isn't it? You know, we all see false people in life. And I don't like false, you know. I really don't. But I see, I talk to people, and you know when they're, when you talk to somebody, and they're looking the other way, and they're on their phone, and you're like, and you can see them doing it, and it's like, that's ignorant, you know. And if I'm out with people, like last weekend, we was out in Beeston with our friends, and I say to them, look, I'm not being ignorant, I'm doing a social media thing for my channel. So... I'm just reaching out to breweries, saying that I'm drinking their beer, tagging them in. You know, it's it's good for them, it's good for me, and I'm I'm not being ignorant because that's not me, and they're totally understandable on that. I mean, I actually went out, I did some reviews at one stage, but I've calmed it down. Uh, yeah, you can only have there's only so many reviews you can do. You know, what I mean, bloody hell, if I've reviewed if I'd have reviewed everything I've drank over the last ten years. I'd be on about 30,000 reviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I've actually stopped counting the reviews now because it gets embarrassing. Yeah. I know Jim, I think Jim is the only one who's still, Rampant Lion Beer Reviews, is probably the only one of us, maybe Harry, Blue Nose Beer, that's still counting their reviews. Everybody else has gave up. <laughs> I can totally understand that as well. It's like, what number am I on? And I was on like two and a half thousand reviews and I thought, oh, for God's sakes. And I just stopped it. Not only that, it's taken up valuable um, space in YouTube. Uh, 100 character uh, thing where you can't have more than 100 characters, which is an absolute ball bag when someone brings out a beer that's like 90 characters long and that's before you get to the brewery name and the fact you're doing a beer review of it yeah lumiere bang the elephant you're guilty of that lads you are guilty yeah not that you watch my reviews not these sort of reviews anyway apart from you i suppose but yeah great lacing on the glass right 
the aroma. This is the reason why talking on beer reviews is, is interesting because I've got a touch of vanilla then on the aroma. I still get a burnt, roasty toastiness with this. Hint of coffee. A little bit of chocolate. It's a great tasting stout, but not a complex imperial stout that I'm quite mm. used to. So, is there a thing where If I'm reaching out to everyone who watches beer reviews, is there a thing where you, you've had a beer from certain breweries and, you know, you've had a beer that's just simply amazing, you know, that's off the charts, unbelievable. Then when you come back down to drinking other beers, are you not as illuminated by those beers? This is a good tasting beer, don't get me wrong, but it's interesting. It's an interesting topic of conversation. So for me, it's a low ABV Imperial. You know, I'm used to Imperials at least 8.5%. I don't count anything below 8% as an Imperial. I've seen it. I understand uh, the old way of doing it was that over something like over 6.5 was classed as, in, as Imperial. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. But it's a great tasting beer, nonetheless. Yeah, it's at the spot. It's lovely. It's not too strong. And in some ways, it's probably a good thing because I've got to carry on painting. And uh, one does not want to make a mistake. It's not a complex beast that I'm, I'm, I'm used to in a lot of uh, Imperials. It's more straightforward. But yeah, good 4.3 out of 5. Me, there, uh, Lambstone Brewery, Stone Dead. Cheers, all.